Hey everybody, it's Clarissa Bird, the author of The Self-Esteem Regime, and I am on the online prosperity show with our good friend Prosper. We are going to be talking today about everything self-esteem, how wide it goes, how deep it goes, how are you stuck, and how can you move forward with happy, healthy self-esteem. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarowinga, and today we have the privilege of interviewing a true powerhouse in the entertainment industry. Clarissa, how are you doing today? Doing all too well here in Arizona, <laughs> where we are in the triple digits Fahrenheit, and so we will be for the next six months. I'm doing, it's one day at a time at this point, Prosper, we're just one day at a time with this heat. Fantastic. And my apologies for not addressing you with your rightful title. Dem Clarissa, how are you? Well, Dame Clarissa is doing very well, obviously. You know, as I was knighted last year, it was a grand honor from the Sovereign and Royal Order of Cappadocia, uh, Constantine the Great and St. Helen. It was obviously a, just one of the greatest honors. Uh, and I'm glad to be very, very proud to be a part of this Royal Order. And uh, it was really not expected, but very much appreciated. Fantastic. Now, for those that are watching right now, we are in the presence of royalty. So join me in welcoming the internationally acclaimed award-winning media personality, producer, director, writer, author, public speaker, and former supermodel, Clarissa. And she has a career that spans for over 35 years. Um, you know, that brings a wealth of experience from both the international and American markets. She definitely is a relentless networker, and we're going to be learning a lot uh, from her today. She's also the creator of a successful media group and the author of the very inspiring book, The Self-Esteem Regime. Now, recently, like I mentioned, she has been knighted as a dame. So Clarissa continues to make waves in the industry. And it's really an honor and a palm pleasing pleasure for us to have her on the show. Now, obviously, Clarissa, you know, with a track record like that, your career is incredibly um, inspirational and diverse. You've got numerous um, accomplishments in different areas and, um, you know, sectors in this markets. Now, can you share with us how you actually transitioned, first of all, from being a supermodel to becoming a successful media personality and entrepreneur? Uh, I started out in kindergarten when I was Mary Poppins. And <laughs> so at five years old, when I was on the stage and I was singing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, I got a standing ovation and I caught the bug. I was hooked. I realized that my life <laughs> was going to be in some way, shape or form on a stage in front of a microphone and certainly with a platform. And uh, and that's really kind of where it started. It took a little bit longer to get get things started after kindergarten. But um, I will tell you that I absolutely love media. I love every genre of media. I've been in movies on television and the radio, the podcast, digital magazine, Anything that is media, I absolutely, I absolutely love. My company in the limelight media is for entrepreneurs and solopreneurs that want to get their message out. So we help them do that. And I, uh, I mean, I love, absolutely love what I do. Absolutely. And thank you so much for that. Now, you really started at a tender age and I don't know how at kindergarten you could actually say super, I can't even say that, super califragilistic expiality. <laughs> Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. You don't remember the song? Oh, well, I mean, growing up, we would watch it, but obviously yeah. never really got involved in it. So that yeah. would have been the time when you really um, amped up your own self-esteem. And uh, obviously from there, it's just been climbing up the rungs, um, yeah. you know, especially in the entertainment industry. Now, you've actually written a book about self-esteem and, yeah. um, you know, taking from all the stages you've been and the places you've seen and the people that have actually connected with you, you note that this book has been a life-altering experience for you. Now, can you just tell us 
a little bit more about the message in the book, the mission and the movement um, that it has actually inspired. Because you're absolutely right, Prosper. It is a manual. It's more of a resource than a read. And for me, it is a mission and a movement. And people say, Clarissa, you've been so successful. You, It seems from here, you have the perfect life. Well, obviously, you know, no one's life is perfect. And there are many things that happen behind closed doors or things that we don't see. We haven't walked a mile in someone else's shoes to know exactly what their life has been like. Well, you know, self-esteem doesn't discriminate. We all have our our issues, problems, uh, uh, you know, and conundrums. So um, and things that we need to overcome. And certainly in my life, I've had plenty of those things also. And I have not been exempt. And I really wanted to put these examples and these uh, the, the, my life experience into words. I, as a very young child, I had did not have you know computers and internet yet, but I did have bookstores, and there was something called the self help section, and that's where I would go to listen, to read, and to find solace, assistance, uh, the answers to some of my questions, and it just gave me comfort to know that there was something that I could, again, we didn't have internet courses, classes, there was none of that, but there was that very, very small section that I would gravitate toward. And back then we had three different bookstores, you know, book chains in the United States. Now there is only one, but I'm very happy to say not only is the self-esteem regime in that bookstore, and it has been for a year and a half, but Barnes and Noble now, if you go down, if you look for the self-help uh, section, it's now called the personal development section, and it goes on for rows and rows and rows and rows of books, kind of like what I see behind you right now. <laughs> and um, this just goes to 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 solidify the idea that man is and women. We're all still looking for answers and comfort and solace and the reason why, and especially in these times, and especially post COVID. COVID was such a difficult time for the, you know, the globe, the whole world, basically, in, in you know, in different ways. There was, there was such a sense of three years of loss, and we're still recovering from those three years of loss. So whether it be loss of family, friends, money, jobs, um, self, um, um, a loss of a, a direction, loss of our path, whatever that might have been. These are the times that I call to arms and I and it's a call to action to say, please make sure that you continue on your path to self-improvement, uh, personal development, self-esteem, self-help, self-awareness, uh, whatever that may be. Um, you know, again, this is something that I really, really um, say people are, oh, I don't have the time. I can't read you. I can't, I can't. I don't have the time. But you do have the time because if you have the time to uh, go to the doctors, make it to the vet, walk the dog, take the kids to the ball game, uh, you know, get a haircut, get your nails done. You have the time. Take 15 minutes a day. I, it doesn't matter. 15 minutes a day. Put it in the calendar as you would any other appointment that you make for yourself and do the work. It'll take about eight minutes, maybe nine, to read a chapter in my book. I I have specifically made the book. It's the regime because it's an organized way of doing things. And each chapter, there are 12, which will start with release. So we start at the beginning. What do we need to get rid of? What's not serving us? What did we learn along the way that we thought was etched in stone that is not? because it's not helping us in any way. Might have been brought on by our family, by our familial tribe, by uh, generational trauma, by you know genetics, whatever it might have been, we now know that that's not serving us. And we love you, mom and dad, and we thank you very much, but we're on our own path now. So this is where we put on our big boy britches, our big girl britches, and we move forward with what is better for our, to serve us so that we can better serve humanity and others. So it's a it's 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 you know this is something that that I get very passionate about because this is called um self-esteem. This is not called what does everybody else think about me esteem. Right? We have to be able to advocate for ourselves, we ourselves. We have to be able to do the work for ourselves. To worry about external uh, uh, the external uh, in input and impulses and always remember that what anybody else thinks about you prosper is really none of your business absolutely and so many people um 
you know, grind to a screeching halt, you know, thinking that what are people going to think about me and how am I showing up? And it really cripples them, um, you know, when they are trying to get around in their life. Now, you mentioned a really uh, significant part in people's lives. You know, the last couple of years presented, um, you know, unprecedented uh, times where, you know, a different kind of leader was needed, um, you know, first of all, to lead yourself and to lead others. And, um, you know, in, 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 in history or anything else, there's usually wartime leaders and peacetime leaders. And during times when it's all good, you know, peacetime leaders show up and it's easy, but wartime leaders were needed um, you know, during the, the the pandemic, and you were actually recognized and knighted as a dame, um, you know, during, um, you know, this time. How has this sort of prestigious uh, honor impacted your life and your career? I think really it's it's more of a recognition of the things that I have done, the things that I had believed in. It was a recognition also. Uh, I, I, I think much of it had to do with the two private audiences with I, that I had with Pope John Paul. You know that I lived in um, in Italy for almost 30 years. I lived in Rome. So I'm not going to say that the, the Pope and I were homies, but I'm going to say that I worked on television there. I was on television frequently if not most of the time and i uh, and and the work that i did in in social uh was something that i think that a lot of people knew uh, i'm not married and i never had children so for me every weekend was normally it encompassed me in some way shape or form accepting an invitation to go to a function that was about a charity it was about an organization it was about the police the carabinieri uh giving back helping children helping the elder whatever it was i always said yes and i just said, look, just send me the car and I'll be there. I don't want any money. Don't give me the flowers. I don't want the plaque. Well, the Italians are Italians and I always got the flowers and the plaque, but I was probably one of the only the celebrities that never asked for money. And that was my way of giving back because that is one of the cardinal rules of self-esteem, right? Self-esteem is look good, feel good, be good and greater good. Those are the four pillars upon which happy, healthy self-esteem uh, sits. And so for me, the idea that um, that I was recognized twice by the Vatican for my social work was really, it was a double whammy because I was already happy that I was making everyone else happy, you know, in, in a couple of different ways. One, because I didn't ask for money and two, because I actually showed up, you know, and, um, and, um, and then that I was recognized by the Vatican then I was later knighted for that. So as I want the, the 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 most important I think lesson or message here is: Do you see what happens when you do good? Do good and forget about it. The, the, the universe gets it. They got it. They got the message. They saw what you did. It was put out there. The good juju went out. You've done your job. Uh, it just set it and forget it. And then you know. And then. If something comes back around that is, is some way of recognition or or an acknowledgement, then that's just a, the cheering on the icing on the top of the cake. Fantastic. And I viscerally believe that we are put here on Earth to obviously leave, to learn and also to contribute. All right. And to leave the best life you obviously have i can you know attest to your um you know celebrity life you would have been in all the glitz and glam that we see on tv and um you know to learn you would have learned quite a lot from all your experiences and the things that you would have done and your contribution is um you know phenomenal like you say if you do good and not expect something in return the universe will always conspire to fill yes. that void that you would have created yes. within yourself now you've got extensive uh international social work and advocacy for especially women's rights um can you maybe share some highlights um you know from your experiences and um yeah you also alluded and, and touched upon your private audiences with uh, Pop John Paul II. 
Yeah. Pope John Paul II was definitely one of my crowning moments. The other crowning moment for me was when I when I was nominated to be the uh, ambassador to the United States for African women. And so I was called to um, to be the ambassador for the United States to something called Walking Africa. And this gave me the possibility not only to go and advocate for African women at, um, at in European uh, Parliament in Brussels, but it also gave me the possibility to go and meet this beautifully, beautiful, beautifully colored, if you will, with their dress and their garb and the way they showed up and the passion that African women showed up with uh, when we were on the panel there at um, at European Parliament was something I would truly never forget. Uh, what I did not know at the time was back in 2000, this is 2011 I speak of, and when um, I was told toward the end of the campaign that we were up as the Nobel Peace Prize, we were up against 211 other candidates. Prosper, believe me when I tell you, I never for one moment, I think this was the thing I was the most secure of in my life. You know, when it, like the lightning bolt goes through your body and you went, we got this. This yep. is so, we have this. I know it's ours. And it was. So African women, indeed, there were three women that won the Nobel Peace Prize back in 19, uh, sorry, 2011. And in some way, shape or form, I was able to help get the word out, help spread the word. And I knew a lot about it already because living in Italy, I was to Africa so many times. And I saw with my own eyes, I saw um, the difficulties that many um, African women go through. Uh, this was a, a campaign about clean water and how many miles African women may have to walk with children on their bodies and with heavy uh, jugs of water to go get clean water and come back. But obviously we talk about all kinds of things when we talk about the plight of African women uh, in many cases. And so it would that was really another one of my crowning moments to answer your question. I think one of the, some of the most important work I ever did. And here's another another point, you know, I was there, there in, a, in a bigger capacity, but then there's the little capacity where you do one-on-ones. And there was a girl that I met up in Las Vegas some years ago. God, it has to be 15, 14, 15 years ago. And she, I did not know at the time, beautiful girl. We were at a, an event, a networking event or something. And she was working the event as a local. And she came up to me one day and it comes out in the wash that she was a call girl. And she was absolutely in tears. I mean, the girl was sobbing and just in really bad straits. And she had burned herself out with with the life in Las Vegas. And so I said, look, I live four hours from here. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Come to my house, get out of here. She had no parents. She wasn't talking to her parents for years. And so she, a beautiful girl, she came here and she had this pink racing stripe on her car and the blitz and the glitter and all stuff everywhere. She got rid of everything. She changed her phone number so that nobody could find her again from Las Vegas. She still to this day has that phone number from, from, you know, area code in Phoenix. I think she came here for about four months and she just sort of detoxed and fell into her real self. She went back to Las Vegas, went back to church, found a job as a waitress, found the man she's going to marry in September. They've been together now 12 years. And she is a very, very, very successful salon owner. She opened up her own salon and she does beautiful hair and hair color and haircutting. Just to be able to tell you that you never know how you'll able to change the trajectory of someone's life. And now she has a happy, healthy relationship with her mother and her father. So we worked on that for the four months that she was here. We went at her pace. We let her say what she needed to say. But I think we all need to be have our ear to the ground and 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 to understand how we really can make a difference in someone's life. Oh, absolutely! And thank you so much for sharing that story because you know just in the book. Having, She's in the having, book. absolutely having somebody come to you and say, "Hey, because of you, I did not give up." I think mm -hmm. is the greatest gift that anybody can ever present 
to you and your whole thing doesn't really stop there. I mean, you you touched upon um, your experience with, um, you know, the African women. I'm, I'm African myself and I could visually see my mothers, my grandmothers and how obviously, like you say, uh, beautiful colors and everything else. But be, deep down, they're carrying a lot of burdens, more than the water that you see uh, in their heads, more than the uh, babies on their back. Um, you know what I mean? When we started talking, you did mention, oh, I'm not in my perfect room. There's no air cleaning in here. And I'm thinking these people have direct elements hitting them. And it could be, uh, you know, through the scorching sun and things like that. Now, you, you were an ambassador for the Walking Africa campaign. And you played a really crucial role in um, awarding African women the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, that's a really tall order right there. And how, how did this uh, experience shape your perspective on social you know, this change. Is the other piece. Yeah, I will tell you, sorry to interrupt, uh, Prosper, but the idea really is when you follow your passion, and my passion was being in media, you know, the beginning of my life was really about learning media, learning how to master it, learning how to take a microphone with no fear, learning how to own the room, learning how to get your message across, get really to the heart of people. That was the learning aspect. Then it was, okay, great. Now, what are you going to do with this celebrity status what are you going to do now that r- makes a because di- it's not about me it's not about you know me being on stage it's about what can i do with that now and as i said to you before the self-esteem regime is a book and it's also you'll see the blue blue because it is it is very broad as a subject it's very deep as a subject and it does not discriminate it doesn't discriminate for race or creed or male or uh, you know or gender or sex or it doesn't discriminate. It's all across, straight across the board. Some may have less, some may have more, but it does ebb and flow as we go through life because life is life and it will trigger us and things will happen. And we're not always going to be on top of our game and something's going to knock us off our peg. It's just life. It's going to happen. When we have the tools in the shed that we need to affront that storm coming through, right? So here comes that storm. Oh, batten down the hatches, everybody into the basement, you know, all of that. Once the storm has gone through, you know, I talk about standing strong in your stead. It's a tree analogy with the roots. Have you lost the proverbial leaf or two? Maybe you've lost a little branch, but you haven't been uprooted with the storm and transported away because you had the tools in the shed. And by that, I mean, reading the books, doing the work, being a better person tomorrow than you are today, and also understanding that the only opposition you have is never someone else. It's not, You never want to compare yourself to someone else. Compare yourself to the person you were yesterday. Compare oh. yourself to them. The other analogy that I love to say is, you know, we, we, lo- we like to talk about how the grass is always greener on the other side. First of all, the grass is always greener, Prosper, where you water it where you nurture it, where you love it, where you care for it. And I talk lots here about relationships and family, right? Your work, your passions. But the other thing that I say is be very careful, especially when we're talking about social media, is is the grass really greener on the other side or is that astroturf? In other words, the perception that we get through social media, the things that we think are real that are not, is it really greener grass or is it fake plastic? grass. So being really super mindful about what we're looking at, where we're learning from, what we decide to accept into our reality as real. Be real careful about that stuff. Fantastic. A lot of people are walking around taking selfies in other people's yards and making it look like their grass is greener. And eventually those that are watching will definitely... you know, uh, be dumbfounded only to realize, wait a minute, this person is even worse off than I was, yet I was putting them uh, in high steed or esteem. Now, there's going to be be a lot of people with a lot of questions. Maybe I'm not really, you know, really peeling the onion here. Um, You've got a way that people can uh, obviously get in touch with you if they are um, really super keen on learning a little bit more about, you know, your life story and your experience and the tremendous value that you can bring to the table. 
I'm everywhere on social media. Just it's Clarissa Burt pretty much everywhere. You can find me except on Snapchat. I'm not on Snapchat, uh, but I'm everywhere else. You can find me there. And the book is in Amazon straight across the world on Amazon, you know, dot com or I don't know, a dot com dot AU, I would assume for you. But um, yeah, it's it's out there. And, uh, you know, we only have a couple of choices in life, three of them, actually. It's either you give up, you give in or you give it all you got. So I'd like to say that. And if you'll allow me to give you the four things that you can't get back in life. And I think we could close the show if you're if you agree with that. The four things you can't get back in life are the word once it is said, an opportunity after it is missed, time after it's gone, and trust after it's lost. Fantastic. That is a profound way to look at things. And I'll definitely be putting the links, uh, you know, to your uh, book in the show notes so that our audience can be able to um, trace back their steps uh, to yourself. Now, you know, you also mentioned that you are available on uh, multiple, um, you know, media platforms. Now, in, in addition to um, you know, the multimedia platform that you've created yourself. You also host a podcast where you mm -hmm. interview knowledgeable entrepreneurs and thought leaders. Yes. Um, first of all, what motivated you to start this podcast and what has been some of your most memorable interviews so far? I can guarantee you on my podcast, you will be up there with, <laughs> with most of them. Probably Jeff Hoffman, you know, the guy that started up Priceline and so many other so many other things. Greg Reed, who is, you know, we we actually uh, there is a, a gentleman that I introduced. Greg Reed is a is a um, he has a, a, a one of the biggest networking events here in the United States. He's been recognized by Forbes and many others. Uh, I've known Greg for many years and I met a gentleman by the name of Frank Shankwitz, who is the man that started up the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And so I put them together and I'll make a long story short, we actually produced a movie called Wish Man. And it's a story of how the Make-A-Wish Foundation started. It's on Netflix and Hulu and many of the others. So I was thrilled to be able to give Frank his wish before he passed a few years ago and uh, to be a producer in the movie. And not only, but I'm also Frank's stepmother, the good mother um, in the movie. So that was another really, really, uh, really cool thing to do. Absolutely. Every time you speak, I have all these questions that I need to <laughs> ask, but, and I know you've given us so much right now, but as an accomplished entrepreneur there, uh, Clarissa, what, what are some of the essential qualities or skills that you believe every aspiring entrepreneur should cultivate? Because people are watching right now and they're probably thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to do that or connect with all yeah. these people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Super simple, and that is relationships. And there's no reason in the world today with the ease of social media that we need to be meeting people. You know, we all go to these you know, networking events and networking groups and jumping on Zooms and all of the rest. And we all take people's information and then it dies right there. And nobody ever contacts us and we never contact anyone else. I think that in order to be one of the greatest communicators in the world, you also have to be a phenomenal connector. And one of the things that I love doing is being able to put people together you know, I say, hey, listen, you two definitely need to meet, right? And then step out of the picture. Don't ask for anything. Don't, you know, expect anything. Just let them get together and let their light shine. Uh, and it always does. I, look what I have. I put, you know, I put Frank Shankwitz together with Greg Reed. A movie was born. And, that you know, I, I was never expecting to be producer. I was never expecting to be in the movie. But Greg asked me to be a, a producer. And Frank asked if I would be his mother in the film. Look, as I said before, you put out things to the universe and the universe sees all, knows all. You will get your comeuppance. You will get your payback. Uh, don't think of it that way. But, you know, you're never going to be left out. Um, just do good. Do good. In answer to your question about the podcast, yes, I did start a podcast for solopreneurs and entrepreneurs. Uh, I put that on hold for the summer. I will be starting up again in September, and we're going. I'm going to be calling it Shelf Mates. And those are all of the people that are on the shelves in the personal Many of the people that are, I can't, if I did them all, I'd you know, be here forever. But I want to contact many of the people that are on the shelves with me in the personal development section at Barnes & Noble. And uh, as I stand right now, I don't know if you know these two of names, but I'm going to say them. It's Tanya Brown, Renee Brown, 
Clarissa Burt, Deepak Chopra, and Dr. Joe Dispenza, all on the same shelf. Yeah. So I think they would. <laughs> I have the pictures to prove it. So yes, it's extraordinary. Extraordinary. I'm a lucky, lucky, very blessed woman, Prosper. And um, uh, and I'd like to think you're very, very lucky and very blessed too. Fantastic. Now, Clarissa, you really... I was about to close this, but you've really opened up one last loop that we need to close here. Sure. Um, I mean, obviously, you've brushed shoulders with royalty. You're part of royalty. You've been in the whole celebrity circles. You've been a supermodel. You've been in front and behind a camera. You started a podcast. You've been on stages with uh, the highest of the highest, you know, pop uh Francis you have been in so many different um you know life changing uh, you know experiences and now you just mentioned you are brushing book shoulders with some of the highest and most elite uh, publishers and authors out there what's yes. what's next for Dem Clarissa like what what's the next thing mm -hmm after this since you seemingly have um yeah thrown everything yeah. out of the park i would really like for this now you know i'm going to be starting with some retreats but i'd like for them to become major events my next really big goal is to fill stadiums you know with with the following of people that really you know they want to hear they want to hear they really want to hear uh how they can be bettering themselves look the world is in such a difficult place and it's in such turmoil that the really i think this the salvation for us is going to be people that live in servitude and people that live with good hearts. I think that that truly is our salvation because we've seen enough evil. We we're going through it all. You know, war has always existed. Uh, pestilence has always existed. Uh, you know, sickness has always been around. Like, you know, it wasn't the first pandemic in the world. We do get through things um, because we are extraordinary that way. But we need to be extra extraordinary. There's something else I would like to leave everyone with. And that is, you know, we hear all the time about how I am enough. You are enough. We are enough. I am enough. If you look up the definition of enough, it's only as much as is required. Now, Prosper, I don't know about you, but I know about me. And I know that I am so much more than enough. And this is what uh, my vision is. My vision is to see the world, the people of the world living as esteemed beings. And if you imagine a world where we can all come together as esteemed beings, can you imagine in what world we might be living in? Now, I understand that would be utopia. And I understand I'm probably, you know, I'm reaching for the stars, but I always did reach for the stars and I haven't, haven't missed too many of them yet. Fantastic. And you are a star in yourself. So, you know, not only were you reaching out for them, but you actually became one of them. And I really, really appreciate your time on the show today, Clarissa. Thank you. Thank Fantastic. You so and really touching up on the last thing that you mentioned, where a lot of people think and are told that you are enough. Enough means you are a drop in the ocean. But what Clarissa is actually saying is, is you the, the, word the, enough, the are, word enough is not enough, Prosper. Absolutely. The word in itself, the word enough is not enough by sheer definition. Absolutely. It's when people have just given up to really expand and see what else is possible for them. And as I was saying, enough is literally just being a drop in the ocean, whereas you are actually the ocean in that one particular drop. So it's been an absolute pleasure to have the extraordinary Clarissa on the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with us um, uh, today. Thank you, my kind sir. Thank you very much. Fantastic. And for those that are watching, uh, please uh, co connect with Clarissa or go to Barnes & Noble, purchase that book and be inspired because her remarkable journey as an internationally acclaimed media personality, producer, director, writer, author, and former supermodel has really left me especially, and I'm guessing whoever's watching right now, inspired and empowered. As you can tell from her story, her relentless networking uh, to her dedication to elevating women 
entrepreneurs through, um, you know, her job and what she's doing right now, uh, Limelight Productions. Clarissa really uh, continues to make a significant industry, first of all, in the industry and in the people that she is touching along the way. Thank you once again, Clarissa, for sharing your invaluable insights and experiences with us. And to our viewers, thank you for joining us on this enlightening episode of the Online Prosperity Show. Until next time, stay prosperous.